Welcome to Excel Highway. In today's video, I want to share with you a stock portfolio tracker I created in Google Sheets. Using this portfolio tracker, you can see your um, performance, how much money you earned, what's your potential earning if you sell your stock today, and just a very simple but effective tool that you can use to enhance your metrics for how well you're doing. If you're interested to learn how to do this thing on your own, then just stick around because I'm going to walk you through all the steps on how to do it. You're still here. Great. Let's deep dive into how this is built. So let's start with the transaction sheet. This is where you need to log uh, your actions. You have a date column. You have a ticker column. And you have a buy and sell drop down list. And to create a drop down list, it's very easy. You need to click somewhere, click on data, data validation, add rule. Now there's options from a range, which I usually use, but in this case, because it's only two options, I just write buy and sell. And I selected two colors just so it looks nice. In the advanced options, I don't like that error the gray uh, zone so I select arrow and reject the input so you can't select anything else and then it just looks like that just like I have over here so that's how you create a drop down list very easily and how many shares were bought or sold um, then you have the share price which is calculated using Google Finance so Google Finance lets you return a lot of information let me just take this piece right here so you see it. So you need to use a function called Google Finance, then it's the ticker, then it's the attribute that you want to see, and you can see some examples here, hopefully. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's see if it shows me some examples, but there's like price, there's, you know, all sorts of attributes that are related to uh, to stock. You have the start date, the end date, the number of days at interval. In this case, I want uh, just the date itself, but in another function, I'll show you how to build history. So I want the uh, ticker for that date and show me the price. Now, oops, sorry about that. Now, uh, if I just use the function, you see it's going to return to me basically a small table, date, close, and I don't want that. I just want the price. That's why I used index two and two. So basically, it's going to return index second row and second column. So it's going to bring me back the number. And I use the if error because I dragged this formula all the way down. So I don't have to redo it. So I have if error just to return a zero because I'm going to use the share price. Total, that's the shares times the price. Available quantity. This is what I use just to make sure I don't make mistakes. Because when I report a sell, I want to make sure that I have enough shares to sell. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Here's where I use available quantity. So I'm using a double sum ifs. Sum ifs for, um, for D, right? The number of shares based on the same ticker and buy. So that's going to return how many shares were bought uh, previously to this line minus how many were sold. So you can see in the example, here I bought AAPL, I think it's Apple, <laughs> and that's why it's showing me available quantity uh, 100. Now, what I did here with uh, data validation is that if I try to sell more shares than I own, it's gonna show me this uh, error. And again, this is very easy to do um, over here. I'm using a data validation with a custom formula. And the custom formula is, as you see, if C2 equals sell and D2 is um, less or greater than uh, equal to G2. Okay. So that's how I do that. And that makes sure that, uh, that uh, makes sure that I don't, I'm not able to input a number that's greater than the public quantity. Um, so that's the first step that you need to fill out. Um, the share price is automatic. So once you do that, basically you did what you need to do. Stock summary, 
this is where you see the summary per, per ticker. So first off, I'm using unique filter and sort. So filter, so filter transactions for whatever is greater than zero for the available, because I only want to see what's still available. If I have a uh, stock that is not uh, already sold everything, I don't want to see it over here, okay? So um, that, that's given me the list. Then I have the bot shares. That's going to be the sum, sum of what I what I uh, bought. So I'm looking for the value buy for those stocks. Purchase price is going to be the total. So column F. Sum ifs. I hope that this is clear for you. So sum ifs. The first part is what you're summing. Then it's the criteria. So column B equals the ticker. Column C equals buy. That's going to return the number uh, of the total price I paid. Then I just have the average shared price. This is again uh, going to be helpful just so if you have cases where you bought a different date, so the price is different. So you can have a, a, a not an average, but an actual average. So a weighted average, it's more accurate. Sold shares, those are how many uh, shares were sold based on column C, sorry, which is sell. That's why it's important to only enable buy or sell as an option. Again, sold price, column F, and the average selling price. Then you have the gain. Gain is going to be what you sold. Um, and the delta between the average selling price and purchase price. Okay, so I've, I've sold 50 shares. And the delta is about $2. So it's $120 gain. And percentage-wise, that's the gain divided by the number of sold shares um, times the average price, okay? So I made 1.31% uh, profit on this one. Here I lost 30% on Intel uh, stock. The remaining shares, that's the delta between what's bought and what's sold. Current price, that's going to show me today. Okay, so instead of the date where I selected, here I selected a specific date, and now I'm going to use the function today. So that's going to give me the current price per share. Current value, numbers remaining times the price, and the current total value, that's what I sold plus what I have currently available potential. So potential gain or total gain, that's the total value minus the purchase price. So if I sell today this stock at 222, I'm going to make $3,000 and a 13%. So that's how this table is built. Okay, now we have the stock summary. Um, let's take a look at the dashboard. So the dashboard has basically two um, parts, my stock summary. So it's going to show you the cash invested, which is what we have over here, everything that we purchased, the cash return, everything that we sold, okay, the current stock value, which is the current value, and the total gain, which is the difference between them. So how much I invested, how much I got in, in sorry, how much I got in return cash, how much is the value today minus what I invested. So my portfolio is, is uh, has a profit of seven thousand or seven percent compared to what has been uh, invested. How many shares are remaining? So it's the sum of the shares in column J and average share price. Okay. Just to give you some information. Uh, I also impl um, implied here a simple function that if this number is positive, it's going to show gain. And if it's negative, it's going to show loss. And also the color here with conditional formatting. So if it's greater than, uh, if it's less than zero, it's going to be red. And if it's greater than zero, it's going to be um, green. So um, that's this part here. My stock performance chart, that's show, going to show you all of your, uh, your tickers, basically, and the total gain and the total gain in percentage. And it's sorted by highest gain to lowest gain. And this is coming from here, from the chart history. I'll show you how to build this. So it starts with the ticker, so it sorts and filters 
the ticker, uh, sorry, stock summary for J. Again, only for the ones that have any uh, stock uh, remaining. If you want to see everything, you can of course cancel that and don't not have that uh, filter. So you can just remove it if you want. And then I'm sorting based on column 14, which is the column of the game. So I get this table nice and sorted. That's very simple. And then the, the next part is to create a chart. So I usually select uh, the area, create a chart. Then I'm going to have to remove everything. And then I'm going to have to add the total gain, total gain percentage. I want a combo chart. And I need to switch to customize. So go to series, total gain percentage. That's the line. And I want the axis to be a right axis. I want the, just want to see a point. So for this example, so basically that gives you the same chart that I show in the dashboard. Let's bring it over here. So you see, then I just, you can't control X, control V. So you have to control C, control V. Again, click it once, control C. Why it's not working, strange. I'll do it the old fashioned way. Click it here, copy chart. Okay. And then you move it over here and then you can just do other things like the title, uh, my portfolio. You can have that, you, the legend. I usually have the legend at the bottom and you can have values if you want. Uh, like so, but that's up to you. So that's the first chart that I have over here. And now let's take a look at the second part, which is a stock review. That's just supposed to give you some information on, on stock trends. You can use that to take decisions and see what is the uh, trend. So here I took a ticker that I don't have in this example. It's a Bitcoin ticker. And you can see that it gives me that chart if I change it to Apple, then I'll get this a different chart. And you can play with a time bucket. It can be weekly or daily. And you can play with the number of years, up to six years of data. Uh, and the up to is also, you can change that uh, for uh, whatever you want. I'll show you how it's built so you can change it. I'm, I'm showing the highest value, when that highest value was achieved, the current price, the delta from the current price, how many shares I currently own of that stock, what is the purchase price, and this is going to show me the gain or loss, but uh, because this number is neither that nor there, I'll just do it this way. If error, add an if error here, just so, yeah. We still have that text to the left, okay? So even if there isn't, I don't own any stock, so it's still gonna show me something, right? Zero and zero because I don't own, any, own anything. Okay, uh, how is this chart built? Very easily, go to chart history. Um, don't need that anymore. So history chart over here, I have the ticker from the dashboard. The start date is today. The time bucket from the dashboard. Number of years from the dashboard. That's going to convert the number of years to days. And that's going to show me the highest value. And that's going to show me when that highest value was achieved. Okay, so it's looking for the match. It's matching this value over here. That's going to return, return the row number. And we're going to use index to basically uh, show me that row in the date column. So that's going to show me the date column. And this is built with Google Finance very easily. So Google Finance for the ticker, just like we did before, price B3, which is the start date, minus B5. So because I want six years of data, all right? Uh, then I want it to have a, a start date, which is um, today, and which time bucket, daily or weekly, for my selection. And also here in the... Uh, as you can remember, the data validation here, 
is for a daily or weekly option. So that's how this is built. And the reason for six years is because I just built the chart for that period. You can, if you select here, 12 years, this, this chart, if you go to, goes all the way to 2000, let's see. Yeah, it's still good enough. So actually you can do a lot more. <laughs> yeah, for a weekly time frame. If I select daily, which is seven times more, let's see. Yeah, it added more lines. Cool. So it just added more lines. So actually, you're not limited by the number of uh, of rows, but you would need to edit the chart and you know change that to three thousand. Then you get more years. I think that's just too much information. Anyway, so. Those are the two charts and, and the summary and how you can maintain this. And of course, since this is Google Sheets, you can make a lot of changes and a lot of metrics based on the data. I hope you enjoyed this content. And if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, I'll see you next time. Take care.